Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Cookies and Canvas for Kids. All right, so today we are painting cookie stealing sloth and I am going to be eating my Three Musketeer cookies. So let's paint our canvas and eat our cookies. All right, so for the materials today, I'm going to be using a Stretch and Prime 16 by 20 canvas. You could certainly switch up the size if you're painting with me, but that's what I'm going to be using. For my acrylic paint colors today, I'm going to be using titanium white, deep yellow, green oxide, burnt sienna, which I'll call rust, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, and Mars black. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'm gonna be using. For my tools today, I'm gonna to be using a half inch wide bristle brush, a number eight round brush, and a number one round brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And let's see what else. You're gonna need a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I'm gonna give you a couple of additional resources. Um, the first of them is a link where you could purchase this entire paint kit with the same size canvas and the same paint colors and same brushes and all that good stuff that I'm using. Uh, it's convenient and affordable, so that's there for you. Um, and there's also a free downloadable image of the final painting for you to print. That way you can use it as a visual reference as you go through the process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions. But the most important thing that you're gonna find down below is a recipe for my delicious Three Musketeer cookies. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are painting our background. We're gonna use our big bristle brush and the colors I'm using are white, yellow, and green. And I'm not going to wash my brush through, the, through this process. I will be just picking up these colors arbitrarily. My goal is to have the center the lightest and as you work your way out towards the edges, you can get it darker with more green. So I will be using white with a little bit of yellow in the beginning and I'm going to be just applying my paint with this circular motion and I'm going to do this for a big area in the middle and then as I start to move my way out of the center I'll start picking up more yellow and at some point I'll start picking up a little bit of green as well so you can see now I'm already starting to get a little bit darker as I go out but this is a personal preference you could make it lighter or darker but I'm trying to get it nice and light on the inside so it almost looks like um, it's glowing or something and so my sloth really pops out of that jungle or wherever it is that he's living right now. Maybe it looks like there's sunshine behind him so you can again make it as light or as dark as you want but I'm going to make mine nice and light in the center and I'm still just using yellow and white. I will start to pick up a little bit of green in a minute, but I really want to get this big area of the yellow and white before I start using the green. Here goes a little bit more yellow on my brush. And I am using a good amount of paint, but I'm not using so much that it's going to take a super long time for it to dry. So just know as you're going through this process that we are going to want it to dry kind of quickly. Um, so you don't really need too, too much paint. Um, and you can always kind of brush out any really thick paint spots, but we'll get to that. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But right now I'm still just using yellow and white. Right now I'm gonna start to pick up green, yellow, and white on my brush. And you're gonna start to see how this is gonna kind of blend out into the exterior of the canvas. And you can paint along the edges or the sides of your canvas as well if you'd like. And I'm just gonna go right around here. I'm using green and yellow. And again, if you can get those edges the darkest, that's gonna make it look like you're really going right into this natural habitat of the sloth, which I'm not sure where they live. I think, I think they live in the jungle, perhaps, 
Uh, I don't know. They might live, hmm, I don't know where Sloss lives. Maybe they live in like Australia or something. Or Africa or Egypt. They probably don't live in Egypt. <laughs> I am definitely, you know, still going around these edges, making sure that it gets a little bit darker as it goes along the edges. And again, you could make it as light or as dark as you want, uh, but you can see I'm definitely going, still using a little bit of green on my brush, but I'm keeping it the darkest around the edges. And I'm just gonna keep going here. I just got a little bit more to go. And we are going to use this same brush for the next step but you're gonna have to wash it and dry it. So once you've got this whole background all nice and painted in, you're gonna wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step, but make sure that you paint every little stitch, every little area of that painting. So if you have to, when you're done, just kind of put, tilt your head back, look at it from a distance, make sure that you've got all those little spots painted in, and then, you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our tree trunk. We're gonna use our large bristle brush and we're gonna use three colors, white, brown, and black. And how we're gonna do this is we're gonna make three stripes with each color and then I'll show you how to kind of blend them in. So we're gonna do a white stripe, then a brown stripe, then a black stripe. And I'm gonna give you a couple of markers where we're gonna place the tree and then we'll go from there. So you're gonna put white paint on your big brush and you're gonna come in about a third of the way into your canvas. And to know how far that is, if you eyeball where your halfway point is, then you go halfway between that and the end of your canvas right about here. And then it's somewhere in the middle of those. So I'm gonna make a white dot there and then I've got down at the bottom of my canvas, another dot. So I'm gonna connect these with just white paint and I have a good amount of paint on my brush, but I wanna, um, forgot to mention that you actually want your canvas dry before you do this step. So that way you're not running through wet paint. So you could either wait a minute or you could take a blow dry or just blow dry it. So now that your canvas is dry, <laughs> we're gonna make a nice white line. It doesn't have to be straight. I'm gonna just kind of get it to meet my bottom mark. Now I'm picking up brown without washing my brush. I'm gonna do a brown stripe right next to it. And then I'm going to pick up black without washing my brush. And I'm gonna do another one on the right hand side. And I want it a little bit wider as it comes down to the bottom. So I'm gonna push my brush a little bit harder. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm going to start to just kind of dot and get these colors to kind of blend in with each other a little bit. So this way what's gonna happen is the left side's gonna be light and the right side's gonna be dark and it's gonna look like you have some bark on there. I'm picking up a little bit more brown. I feel like I didn't, like my, um, like it was a little bit too dry. So I just picked up a little bit more brown and you could do the same if you're going through an area and it's like, oh, I want some more brown there or some more white there, feel free to do so. The, these trees, we're just kind of giving a fun rendition of these trees, but apparently, I think, I don't know a lot about sloths, like where they live, but I think they actually stay up in the trees for the majority of their life, like 15 to 20 hours a day, they're up in these trees. I think that they only come down to go to the bathroom. <laughs> but they stay up in the trees all the time, which I don't know why they wouldn't just go to the bathroom from the tree. That would seem like the easiest thing to do, but whatever. So that's all I'm gonna to do to my tree. You can certainly modify yours, have fun with it. You know, I'm just kind of dotting it as I go and making sure it's all colored in. And then we are going to switch brushes to our medium brush for the next step. So you can put your big brush away in the water cup, have a bite of your snack and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the base coat for our sloth. So I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white, 
and I'm going to be pre-mixing two shades of gray and I'm going to be using my number eight brush. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm going for a two shades of a dark warm gray. And so by warm, we're gonna add brown, which is gonna make it warmer. So it's not um, a cold gray, which would just be black and white. Cause I want this to really look natural and really be like the under tone to the sloss coat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a whole bunch of my brown, slide it over here. I'm gonna use a little bit of black and I'm gonna use a little scoop of white. And I'm gonna mix it all together so I get a nice, it doesn't have to be really dark. You don't want it like black, but you definitely want to have a nice darker shade. And um, we're going to make two shades of it. So you're going to make one pretty darn dark and then one a little bit lighter than that. So I've got a pretty dark gray, warm gray going on here. And I need a good amount because this is a big sloth. So I'm going to make um, my next shade, I'll put that one over here and it's gonna be a little bit lighter so I'll add a little bit more white. I'm gonna save a little bit of my brown for later so I don't wanna use it all up, but I'm making two shades of gray. I'm gonna put this down here so it doesn't run off my palette. So now that I have two shades, one a little bit lighter than the other, what I'm gonna be doing is we're gonna create an outline for the sloth and I'm just gonna give you a couple of markers and then we're gonna connect those markers and by the time we're done, hopefully we will have the shape that is gonna be needed to make this a really super cute sloth. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find about the center of your canvas and make yourself a dot. So somewhere about the center of your canvas, make yourself a dot. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a horizontal line that's about maybe an inch, inch and a half. Now you're gonna come up your tree trunk, maybe to, I don't know, maybe three or four inches. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna connect this dot to the right hand side over here. We're, what we're doing right now is we're making the big butt for the, the back and the butt, and it's gonna come right to about here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda go straight down a little bit and then bubble it out. And I'm gonna, when I come down here, it's gonna be further down than my dot. So here I go, I'm gonna come down like this, I'm gonna come further than my dot, and then just bring it right back up to here. Okay, that's the first, that's the first step. So I'm still, I'm using the darker gray to do this, but if you use the lighter gray, it's okay. Then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up maybe, I would say about maybe two, two and a half inches, something right about there. About halfway between the top and the bottom here is a good spot to make a mark. And now I'm gonna connect this one to here. And this is just gonna be like the inside of his belly, something like that. Now we're gonna make a big oval head. So this is gonna be on top of here and it can be turned a little bit or it can be straight on, whatever works for you. It's gonna occupy a real big spot here. So maybe it's, you know, pretty close to the tree, but not touching the tree. So I'm gonna start maybe right about here and I'm gonna go like this and I'm gonna bring it around like this, something like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just a nice oval. You can color this in while you're here if you've got a good amount of paint on your brush like I do. Then what I'm gonna do, let's make sure I've got it as big as I want it, is I'm going to make what's gonna be the outside of his elbow. So I'm gonna use, you probably didn't see that, my elbow's out of here, I'm like showing you my elbow. So I'm gonna make a mark that's about halfway from here to the butt, so somewhere about here, that's gonna be my mark. And from the neck, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a mark that's gonna come down like this. This'll be his elbow and I'm gonna come back up to here. So here we go. I'm gonna start right about here. I'm gonna come down like this, past this mark, pretty close to my edge of my canvas, maybe like an inch or so away. And then I'm gonna make myself a little elbow and then it's gonna come back up like this. Then I need to make my little hand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come about in, in through here and just do something like that, okay? 
So we've made we've made the arm. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I need a, an arm that comes up over here. So I'm going to start a little bit up the head and I'm going to make a diagonal line that goes higher than my head before it touches the tree. So you want it to touch the tree a little bit higher than the head. And then I'm going to go about halfway between here and the tree, make another mark, and this is going to be the other part of the arm. Now we need to make the side of the arm that goes on the other side of the tree. So you're going to skip the tree, make a mark here, and you're going to come up like this, make yourself a little curve, and when you come back it should, if you kind of line up with this one. Okay. Now we're going to make a uh, the exterior leg that goes on this side. So what I'm going to do is right here, I'm going to, from here, I'm going to go in front of my tree and I'm going to make myself a little bump like that. And then what I'm going to do is from here, this is going to be like his thigh part. So I'm going to bring this in front of the tree like this. It's going to be a bump for the thigh like that. And you don't have to connect it. It's fine like that. And then I need a little a little foot that's going to be over on this side. So I'm just going to from above here. I'm going to make myself just a little a little hump right in through there. And now what we're going to do with the dark gray is we're going to paint the inside of the belly and the head. So I'm going to we already painted the head. You might not have, but I did. And now I'm going to paint the inside of the belly. So I'm going to stay a little bit away from my arm, the edge of my arm, because I don't want to lose that outline and lose where it is. So I'm just going to do something like this and just paint the inside with my dark gray. And then I'll use my lighter gray to paint the exterior pieces. So you can also, this is going to eventually go into the arm, so I can just take a little bit of this dark gray like that. And then this is going to go into the leg too, so I can take a little bit of my dark gray. These will meet right here, the dark and the light. Now I'm going to just load my brush with my light gray, and I'm going to finish painting in the rest of the areas with my light gray. So I've got light gray in through here. And don't worry about it being perfect at this point. You just want to be able to see the difference between your arms. So I've got this arm right here. I want to be able to make sure I can tell that that's the arm as opposed to the tummy. And I want to make sure I can tell the difference between this leg and the tummy. So that way we can, when we are painting it, we'll be able, painting the fur, on the sloth. I don't know if it's fur, because they look like little pine needles, but we can talk about that later. <laughs> um, so that's it. You just want to do dark gray on the um, on the inside and light gray or lighter gray. They don't have to be too different from one another, just so long as you can tell the difference um, and you can see where the separation point is from your leg to your tummy. And then even in through here, it would have been okay if you used the dark as long as you can see it. Let's see here, I'm using my light, just getting these colors or these sections colored in. I am covering up my outline, um, so I, especially if my light gray is much lighter than that outline, just so I don't have to um, worry about painting over that. But if you can still see your outline a little bit after this step, that's okay. And then we are going to use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your sections of your sloth painted in, you can wash and dry this medium brush in preparation for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we are painting our leaves to the forest or the jungle or wherever this little creature lives. I'm going to be using my medium brush and the colors that I'm going to be using are green, black, yellow, white, and if you want, I suppose you could use some rust too or some brown, but the dominant colors are going to be green, black, yellow, and white. 
So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna create a dark shade of green. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my green like this and add a touch of black to it. These are gonna be the ones that are really in the shadows. So these will give it good dimension. So I've got myself a nice dark green here and the colors will dry a little bit darker than they are when they're wet. So just you know, be cautious that you don't wanna go too black on it. And I'm gonna do a similar type leaf all over the place, just in different sizes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do kind of like a stem and then I'll just pull off these neat um, leaves. And I'm gonna do it in all different kinds of directions. These, um, these are kind of uh, uh, imaginary, but I, I, I know that there's lots of different leaves that are in the jungles and anywhere where there's lots of water maybe this is a cool rainforest so you could certainly have fun with these make them as you know wonderful as you want you could have really long ones you could have you know shorter ones in a second i'm going to start to switch colors and i'll go to a lighter green um, but you can see i'm just having fun i'm making a whole bunch of these they could even go over your tree if you wanted them to um, I think that's a good number of dark ones. I am going to be not washing my brush. I'm just picking up the green color. So I am, you know, just gonna have fun with these. And as I'm painting them, maybe I'm imagining all the little jungle creatures that are making their noises. I know that there's lots of monkeys and stuff that live in the jungle. I don't know what kind of noises sloths make, but they're, they're so sleepy. Maybe they don't make noises. They got to make noises. I'm sure th I, I'm sure of it. Maybe you can look that up and maybe you know what noises a sloth makes. I, if I had to guess, I'd probably say that they make like, like little grunts or something. Like, <laughs> that's my guess. You can see I'm just having fun here. Right now I'm gonna start picking up some yellow and white so I can get myself some lighter ones. And if you, if you have a lot of the dark green still left on your brush and it's not as bright as you want, you can certainly just wash and dry. I just washed and dried my brush and I'm picking up some yellow and white. This way I can have some really vibrant ones as if the sun is just kind of peeking through all of this vegetation and maybe is, you know, shedding some beautiful light on some of these plants that are so vi you know, vibrant in their own right because they, they just have so much life to them because they have lots of water in them. That makes, that makes for a very, a very big and very fertile plant when there's lots of water. So I think that I might be all set here. I feel like I've got enough of these plants all nice and dripped within my my forest maybe just a one or two more up here bring this one out here and then we are going to be switching brushes to our small brush so after you get this step done you can put this medium brush away in your water take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're doing for the next step is we're doing the first a step to the face. So we're gonna be using our small brush and we're gonna be using just black paint. What we're in essence doing is we're putting kind of place markers for where we want the nose to go, the mouth to go, the eyes, and that little cute mask that goes down on the sides of their face. So I'm gonna use black paint on my brush and on my small brush. And the first thing I'm gonna do is put the nose in place. So you're gonna to wanna to find kind of the center of the head and you're gonna come down towards the neck. So if this is the center and this is the bottom of the head, it's gonna go somewhere almost in the middle um, between those two. And it's kind of an oval. You just want a little black oval, not bigger than like a peanut. So pretty small. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a smile underneath because sloths, they're so sleepy but they're so happy. <laughs> All of them smile. It's just the cutest little thing. Mm. So I'm gonna make my smile go past my nose on the left, 
past my nose on the right and I don't need it really wide. We're gonna be putting little lips on it later. So just something like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my, where my eyes are gonna go. So they're gonna go just a little bit above the nose on either side. And depending on how wide you have your, your mouth, you don't want them too far out. Um, so something like this. And they're maybe just a little bit smaller than the nose. So something like that. Then I've got another one right in through here. Maybe make my nose just a little bigger. And then I'm gonna do the mask part. So the mask part kind of goes around the eye and it comes down the side. So I'm gonna do like a little line around the eye and then I'm just gonna do these curved edges down into the side of the face and then I'm just gonna streak in a little bit of black doesn't have to be anything solid. So again, I'm gonna do a little line around the eye and then just curve it down towards the side of the face and just streak in a little bit of black. And that is all we're gonna do for this step. We are going to use this same brush for the next step, but you're gonna to wanna to wash it and dry it. And have a bite of your cookie. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are gonna be doing the first layer on the fur for um, the face. I'm gonna be using my small brush and the colors I'm using are white, brown, yellow, and rust. And I'm gonna be making myself a light tan color. So I've got a little bit of yellow, I've got a little bit of white, I've got a little bit of rust, and a little bit of brown and I'm just gonna spin it together. I'm going for a light tan color. So I'm gonna probably add a little bit more white in through here and it doesn't have to be the perfect shade. You just get it, you know, something that's gonna be light and tan. And then what I'm gonna do with that color is I am going to be painting in a, um, in a loose fashion, almost like a circular area of the head Think of it like um, little, almost feathers, even though they're not feathers, but they're pieces of fur. And I'm going to be doing the forehead and you're gonna see it's gonna be nice and streaky and that's gonna make it look more like fur. And I'm gonna be doing this around the mask. So you can see I can almost like outline that mask and then come down past the mouth. I'm gonna to have to, um, Oops, you didn't wanna do that. You don't wanna do between the mouth and the, the nose. So you can go right up to the top of the nose and then you almost outline like that area where the mouth and the nose are. And if you got some in the middle like I did, don't worry, you'll be able to paint over it. And I'm not gonna be painting my mask area, but I'm gonna bring these little cute pieces of tan down in through here. I'm gonna do more up top and it's gonna go all the way, almost um, not to the side of the head, not to the edge of the head, but definitely pretty close, maybe like a half of an inch away from the edge of the head. And I just kind of keep adding some of my tan color and making these little marks that are almost going in the direction, like they're coming out from the center of the head. And I'm gonna keep keep on doing this until I've got a good layer on here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna not wash my brush and I'm just picking up rust and I'm gonna do the exterior of the head with rust on my brush. So same, same brush stroke, you're just getting this outer layer of the fur. <laughs> I don't know if it's fur. <laughs> they look like, like, um, like porcupine quills. They look the same color as the bark on the tree too when we get into the body. They're really pretty cool. And different sloths have different colors to them too. So I am just going with one that I saw a lot of and you can put some down here. And then we are gonna be switching brushes to our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this first layer of fur, if it's fur, on the face, we're gonna switch brushes to the medium brush. So get ready. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we are adding the fur 
on the rest of the body. So I'm gonna be using both of my grays that I had, the dark and the light, and I'm also gonna be using white, and you can also use brown and rust. So you can really have a lot of fun with this fur. They're really long pieces. Um, in the inside of the belly, I'm gonna have them darker, and then on the outside, like the tops of these sections, I'm gonna have it lighter, and I'm gonna be doing my painting technique in like a stripe type fashion. So funny, I'm looking at him. <laughs> I'm like ready to start painting and all I can think of is, hmm, he kind of looks like a cute little baby Chewbacca. Mm. Star Wars, I believe, Chewie, yeah. <laughs> or Chewbacca, yeah, I think that's the name of that character, but whatever. He's gonna look like a sloth soon, I, I can guarantee it. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with my dark fur first and then I'm gonna work my way to my lighter fur. Um, and just know that gravity takes over, which means it's gonna look like it's falling off of like the arm. So it'll start at the top and then it'll look like it's falling off the arm. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Right now I have dark gray in here. So I'm gonna pick dark and my lighter gray and I'm just gonna do these like stripes. I don't want them to be super straight. I want it to look like there's like a bend to it. Like it's going, it's resting on his belly. So I'm doing his inside right now. I'll probably put a little bit of brown on my brush too right now so I can get some little streaks of brown. But what you wanna try and be careful of is that you don't over blend it. So if you feel like you're, I think I'm gonna widen his neck here too. If you feel like your um, brush strokes don't actually look like fur, then that means that you're probably painting too much, like you're, you're almost over painting. That will make it look a little bit less like fur and more just like one solid color. So I know that I, I want some down here. You can certainly make them a little bit farther come out than um, your outline, so that way it looks he looks a little bit fluffier. I've got some nice dark ones in through here. I'm gonna maybe put some dark ones on this little armpit area right in through here. Maybe get some coming out like this. And I'm gonna close off this little, this little gap right here. Just make sure I've got some in through there. Um, and then I'm going to move right on to my leg. So when I do the leg, I know that I want to do some darker ones at the bottom. So I'm going to start at the bottom and just kind of get some of these darker ones in through here. So I didn't really even wash my brush. I just kind of went with whatever what was on there. Now I'm moving into my little bit lighter gray as I work my way up that leg. And now I'm actually going to be picking up white. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna see this really cool dimensional element start to take shape as I put this lighter color on the top. So I went from dark at the bottom and then I just worked my way up that leg and they don't all have to go exactly in the same direction. They can certainly cross over one another. As I get over here, I wanted to kind of transition into the body a little bit without making it look too um, separated from the body. So at any time you want to put some gray back on your brush to make sure that these two look like they belong together. And of course, you can have them hanging over the body down below so it looks like it's nice and fluffy and they've got some length to them. But you want to definitely get that top area the lightest and I'm gonna move on to the, the next little section right here. It doesn't need much at all right here, so I just picked up some of my light gray and white, and I know that this is the top up here. So I'm just really gonna pull down just a couple of curved streaks in through there, make sure it looks like it's got a little bit of dimension by adding just a little bit of that white at the top. Now I'm gonna move on to this guy right here. So this one's kind of this is his arm like wrapped around. So I'm gonna have the light here and dark down here. But it doesn't have to be too dark because it's on the exterior of the body. So I just picked up some, some brown with a little bit of the gray on my brush. 
And as I go up towards the top, now I'm gonna to start to pick up a little bit of white and get these to kind of curve in to make it look like it's, you know, a curved piece of the body here. So something like that. I do need to put something in through here. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the gray and the white, just make sure that I've closed this off. These are gonna be little pieces of fur just coming in through here. I think I need a little bit darker. Not quite sure what direction this should be in. It's on the inside of his arm. I imagine, like I said, gravity's gonna take over. So I've got it coming down like that. Now I've got this last arm over here. I'm gonna start at the bottom with my, with my gray and my brown, giving this some, some dimension. And I know the arm is rounder, so that's gonna, I'm, that's why I'm giving these curved lines to it. And same thing with the leg. The curved lines are gonna make it give you the illusion that it's nice and round. And I wanna make sure that I can see the difference between the arm and the belly. So I'm using a little bit lighter of a color. Now I'm going to pick up some white right now. I don't wash my brush. That way it gives it a nice natural look to it. I think I wanna pull this over just a little bit further so he has room to um, eat his cookie. <laughs> we need to make sure his arm's long enough to feed that cookie to his mouth. Um, and I just need to keep this arm, the front part separated from the back part. So as I come around this corner here, I start changing my brush direction. So it looks more like this. And then I've got to put some along his upper arm. That looks cute. So I've got some gray and white. This is gonna be this upper arm. And I don't wanna confuse the, the upper arm with this part. So I'm not gonna to do too much. Making sure that it, you can still see the difference between the two of them. And then once I've got this section done, we are going to switch brushes to the small brush. But you wanna make sure that you've got plenty of these fe feathers, <laughs> they're definitely not feathers, plenty of these pieces of fur along the body and that it's nice and bright and you can see the difference between everything. All right, I think, I think I'm good. I think he looks nice and fluffy, except for this little middle area where I can see some of the background through there. And then we're gonna switch brushes uh, to that small brush. So you can, you can get ready to do that. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we are finishing the facial features, which is a tongue twister that I challenge you to say three times fast. Finish facial feature, finish facial feature, finish facial <laughs> Finish facial features, finish facial features, finish facial <laughs> Finish facial features, finish facial features, finish facial features. We're gonna use our small brush, and the colors we're gonna use are black, white, and rust. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to first put the color in the eyes. So I'm gonna put just rust paint on my brush and I'm gonna give a little light area in the eyes, something like that, almost like a U. Um, you wanna keep some of the black around the edges of the eye. And then I'm going to wash and dry that little brush and I'm gonna put a touch of white on my brush and I'm gonna give a little tiny mark on the top of the nose to have a highlight. So not the tippy top of the nose, but close to it. And you're just gonna kinda of do almost like a quick arc. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the two lips. So I'm gonna just kinda of go one, two. And if it's too bright for you, just add a little bit of gray into it. So you wanna try and um, have the exterior still black, or at least the sides of it still black. So, ha you know, you might need to do a little tweaking with it, but, you know, think of it as just little lips that are smiling. And then I'm gonna use gray or black and white on my brush at the same time to put a couple cute little nostrils. So these are just gonna be little um, crescents on the inside of, oops, I need a little bit more white so you can see it. Little crescents, one and two. And again, if you need to tweak it a little bit, that's fine. 
And then I'm gonna do this, I'm not washing my brush, I have the black and white on my um, brush, and I'm gonna do almost little outlines of on the eyes. So I'm gonna do, but not a whole outline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this lighter color, and I'm just gonna kinda do a little, a little crescent at the bottom of the eye. So something like that. Then maybe you give it a little eyelid. So again, just black and white on my brush at the same time. That way it's not too bright. So maybe a little bit more white there. So a little bit of an eyebrow or an eyelid. And then I am going to put twinkle dots in the eyes with just a tiny bit of white. So I like to do at least two dots. Um, so, and I, you want to put them in similar spots on both eyes, and I'm going to do mine kind of up towards the top. So I've got one, two, and then one, two, and then we're going to switch brushes to the medium brush for the next step so you can get ready for that. Okay, so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting our cookie. So I'm going to use my medium brush. Um, and I'm going to just use that cre tan color that I use that I made for the face. I'm going to just use that and white. Um, and when you're doing this, you could imagine this to be any kind of cookie you want. Maybe you want to make an Oreo cookie. I think mine's going to be a peanut butter cookie. Maybe you like sugar cookies or, um, oatmeal cookies or coconut cookies, but you make whatever kind you want. I'm making peanut butter because that's my favorite kind of cookie and this sloth is stealing my peanut butter cookie. So what I'm going to do is I have my um, tan color and I'm going to make a little bite mark first so I know where my cookie's going to go. So something like this, like a little U, and then I can just kind of finish the shape of the cookie. I'm doing dots. Um, and the reason why I'm doing dots is because I want my cookie to look textured and I want there to um, it to not be see-through. So I'm using a good amount of paint and I need it to come into the hand and then I'm just going to use some dots and then once I've got my cookie in shape or in place then I'm going to pick up a little bit of white paint and I'm going to highlight the top part so it looks almost three-dimensional. So I didn't wash my brush. I'm just putting a little bit of white paint up at the top, something like this, maybe a little bit on the edge. You have fun with it. Make it look as three-dimensional as you want. Looks like that's a little bite out of the cookie, maybe up a little bit here. There we go. And we're gonna use our small brush for the next step. So once you get your cookie in place, you can put your medium brush away in your water cup, take out your small brush, have a bite of your cookie, and get ready for the next step. Okie dokie, so we are on to making the nails, the fingernails, fingers. I don't know if they have fingers, but they definitely have nails. If you have nails, you have to have fingers. So they must have fingers. So, no, because they could have paws, claws, I don't know. Their nails to me. So I'm using my small brush and I am painting a, oh they're toes, I'm painting a three-toed sloth. There are also two-toed sloths and I think that's it. I think there's just three and two toes but we're gonna make three. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm using black and white. I'm starting with just black on my brush. I'm gonna have nails on this one, this one, and my cookie one. This one is hidden behind the other side because it's holding on to the tree on the other side. So I'm going to do this one first. What you want to do is um, the nail, you want it to be thicker where it hits the body and thinner where it's um, farther away from the body. So I'm starting at the body. I'm pushing kind of hard. I'm going to do a little bit of a curve. And when I get to the end of the nail, I really let off on the pressure so it's nice and thin at the end. And if, it, if yours ends up big, don't worry, you can, you can fix it afterwards. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start somewhere right about here. I'm pushing my brush pretty hard and then I'm bringing it up and into a curve. Their um, nails are super long. 
I don't think I've ever seen any animal that has as long of nails as these guys do. So wicked long. So I'm gonna do the second one, just black paint. And they can touch at the base and they can be different lengths. They're pretty close together though. So, and then here's my third one, maybe something like that. And then I'm gonna go do the other ones. So this one, he's kind of like holding on like this. So I'm gonna make these curved and down towards um, the tree, like it's holding on to the tree. So somewhere right about here, push it and then make it skinnier as it goes towards the tree. This one's push it and I've got a curve to it and then push it and a curve to it. And then I've got a couple coming out behind the cookie. So I've got maybe one coming right in through here. And again, the majority of these are probably hidden on, the, on this particular one. I'm just doing two behind the, hook, the cookie. I'm thinking that the third one is not visible. And once you've got them in place, now what I'm gonna do, I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up white paint and I'm putting a highlight on the top side of the, um, of the nail. So I have white and it doesn't matter which one you start with. And it's gonna look gray if you're running through the wet paint. That's totally fine. Makes it look more natural. One, two, three. And you can see that I have the black still showing. This might take you a minute to kind of get the hang of it, but if you know if you need to do it more than once, so be it. So I push a little bit hard. There we go. And if it ends up a little crooked, that's okay. There we go. Gotta reload my brush. And again, I like going through the wet paint because that's gonna make it look more natural. And then I'm gonna do my two right here. You can see I've got my wet, my I have wet paint on my hand. I will fix that later. And then we have one tiny little step left to go. So once you've got your three toes on your sloth, you can, uh, we're gonna use a small brush for the next step. Take a bite of your cookie and get ready. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of any painting, which is to sign it. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using black paint. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm gonna sign this one in the bottom right. I do my initials. You could do your first name or the date or a symbol, whatever you want is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you loved your cookies and your snack. I hope you think your painting is as super cute as my sloth, I feel is. <laughs> He's just like, mmm, yummy, look at my cookie, I mean. <laughs> um, and I look forward to painting and eating cookies with you again sometime.